Okay then, I'm back. So, I was going to send these two, because I, I, I didn't realise, I thought this wasn't going to cost us anything, but obviously it's, I'm an idiot, and when you do the brown ones, it goes into a thing, because it's a, a real-time event, not a wait-a-month event, and I'm not risking these guys burning out, so I'm, I'm actually going to leave all of these quests until we've got people, like, fixed. So let's send Alter on Rehab, Conrad on Rehab, and Tina on Rehab. And that's going to make sure that we everyone's doing okay for next month. Clint's doing all right. Um, yeah. Right. I'm happy with that. Let's go. So when do, we, when do we have to do this by? We've got three months left. Or technically two months because this is a month that we're about to end. Our approval rating's not the best. Um, but I think we're going to hit this. We've got nine and a half mil. Let's go. Oh, 800 mil. 800,000 bloody. Our staff are doing good. Let's just pay the man. Pay the man. Approval rating. 73%. That, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's, that's good, that. Less than nine mil now. But we've still got stuff coming in. Come on then. Right, so stress. Everyone's been de-stressed, which I'm happy about. Happy days. August, right, let's see what August brings. We've still got, the only thing I'm worried about is more quest piling on top of the ones that we had to leave. So I still think it's going to be a struggle. And we've got loads of donations, look at this. Look at all these donations, 250,000 plus, 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 plus. Brother, you really did me a solid, yeah? We sent him on vacation. Good. Right, save the Native Americans. Did this work? We sent Joe. It, that was a bit of a, it's a weird one, but... Uh, Mr. President, I'm grateful for you to help him, but the fire water supplier, Joe disguised himself as a tourist, so as clamouring for booze surprised no one. The truth, however, turned out to be even sadder than I was ready to accept. It was our sheriff himself who ran a still in his basement. Simply sick of slaving away for peanuts. He said he's now facing charges and the tribe will start on his long road to healing. I've already addressed the media proclaiming that your dearest friend of my people and brave son of two worlds, as a token of our gratitude, we'll be happy to make a small monthly donation to your charity foundation. An extra 50 grand a month. And favour. Good job, Joe. Will. What do we send him on again? Find the leak. Oh, that's right, find the leak. Thanks for helping us out, Mr. President. Will wasted no time on finding the rat. It turned out a female envoy employee was sexting someone named Vesely and the nude she sent had secret drawings of Venus Z in the background. I'll tell you what, this is not simply treason, straight up lunacy. The employee will be fired and blacklisted of course, and a prison sentence is not out of the question for her. Oh, by the way, the launch was an event to die for. Comments on the video say the missile glimmering in the sun symbolise all the great successes of your administration. Nice. Again, we could do this for more money, but I need Ollie and Will for an operation that we already had. I like how this, every time we cancel that, it pops up next time in case you need it. Director of the Environmental Protection Agency, Mr. President, the journalists that call on the executive order that punishes people for discarding cigarette butts in Nazi's wet dream. Mate, well don't be a dirty fucking bastard and put your rubbish away. Smoking's disgusting, man. We need to just kill people who smoke. But I disagree. They didn't have surveillance equipment back in this caliber back in the Nazi Germany. Truth? Concern your refusal to be buried next to me, I won't deny it stung. To make matters worse, somebody tattled to the journalists, and now every rag is claiming that there's discord in a happy family. Mate, the only discord in a happy family is that you keep asking stupid shit. Buddy, I've been thinking about rebranding myself for a while now, but yesterday's event became the final straw. A sweet little girl came up to me during a school meeting, looked at me straight in the eye and said, May I have your autograph, Grandfather Tony? Out of the mouths of babies and all that. You can imagine how I feel, so I decided to have my ear pierced and cast off 10, maybe 15 years. I even bought a fancy earring, the very height of fashion. But I'm a prudent man and will not wear it without your blessing. What do you see, old friend? No. Bro, you're not wearing bling. This guy's going to come with bloody spinners and stuff next time. Bro, you're not a gangster. You're not wearing earrings. Amy Pill, Vice President at Mother's Association of America. Mr. President, I'm appalled by what stories the parents read to young people. The fairy tales are full of orphans, witchcraft and dismemberment. Need I point out that children of four years and younger are particularly impressionable and easily traumatised by such violence. 
Yes, Cinderella is a timeless classic, but even classics have to comply with age limits. I've drafted a proposal. Snow White will be given a 7 rating. What? Sweaty Tony story will raise to 4 plus. And what do you say, Mr. President? Shall we introduce a minimum age requirement for fairy tales? No. Fuck off. Matthew Barsenegan, founder of the Good and Trust charity. Mr. President, our fund merchandise is incredibly popular. The mugs with your face are flying off the shelves, and surprisingly enough, so do little magnets from the Mrs. And Mr. and Mrs. President Safari Limited collection. Let me tell you why I'm here. How about we raise our merch price by 10%? The business is booming, and it's a small price to pay for reaching into the world of the powers that be. No, we're not raising this. If these are flying off the shelves, people want it. I want this merch on everybody's desk. Well, I've not imposed a 10% penalty. <laughs> Rena Rotal, personal photographer. Sir, almost all of your photo shoots are, how should I put this, way too cookie cutter and formal. The journalists have nothing to choose from when they want to pen a human interest story about you. I suggest we have a nighttime pyjama shoot in your office. We'll make a hundred casual style for- Nah, we're not doing that. No, I mean, I'm on business. I'm not here to fucking sit about in pyjamas all day. Joe Lynn, journalist. Mr. President, my heart was feeling really messed up, so I had to get an appointment. Oh, that's right, because this guy's overworked. Um, okay, well, he's going on holiday anyway, so that's good. Mr. President, it's time to talk my pay rise. Suppose I make 208 grand a month. You want to double your pay rise? Not, not happening. Very well. Perhaps we'll return to this discussion later. Right. Okay, so we're two months left to pay. We are close. I've got loads of stuff I can sell, but I'm holding on to it for briberies because I think that's going to be important. Migrants from South America are gathering on the Mexican border. This is putting the president in a vulnerable position. Will he stand his supporters by his supporters or adapt with the times? Thus far, Senator Dickinson has refused to say whether she will vote for or against the president. However, it's normally considered a good sign when a veteran from the opposing party isn't given a definitive answer. Archie Wister, arsehole. I should think the president is trembling like a leaf. His upcoming trial in the Senate must terrify him. I doubt he has the guts to show up. I bet he doesn't even have the stomach to watch it live. But that's alright. They'll inform him immediately on his removal from the White House. Not gonna happen, bruh. I've got this under lock. I've got great news, well good news. Hopefully they turn out to be great. Have you heard of Senator Dickinson from Alaska? She's willing to help us out according to Noah if we care enough to finally pay them a visit and money. There's just one catch. She is, well, she's from the other party, if you know what I mean. Still, if she's given, she's given us a chance, why don't we visit Noah and then her? I'll just ask the Secret Service to make sure journalists are not following. Mm. Tricky. Let me remind you that reclaiming your old assets is an excellent source of income. We are not exactly swimming in money due to numerous expenses, so don't hold back and invest into unfreezing our former fortune. Refugees at risk and get the actor. Right. Convince the iconic actor to depict you in a movie. I really don't care about that. Right. First things first. This. We needed our hackers for this. We can't just let your old companies drift. That, oh, this was about the browser, isn't it? Flint's gone over the report and found lots of inconsistencies. As I understand, the browser is long gone. You liquidated all the company's holdings a long time ago. Right, so that I remember. So what I want for this is we need a, a hacker and keep track of what the press finds out about the company. So I'm thinking Alta, because she's awesome with the press. I could have used Joe, but Joe's burned out. Right, let's send... Hmm. Will's going to be burnt out after this. I don't mind, because I've got Ollie. Right. Will and Alta. Find a working version. Keep track of what the press finds out about the company. I think this is a good tag team. Oh, I could send Ollie. No, because I might need him for another hacking attempt for something, and I don't want to get him burnt. I could send him. No, she's definitely going to sort the press out. Right, let's go. What did this browser do that was special? Block online advertising. I heard from Clint that dealing with online advertising was one of your ideas for your first executive order. Wow, how many years have you had that idea? Okay, we better get to work on this. First, we need to figure out how to get our hands on a working version of this browser. Where are we going to dig it up? The file hosting services it was stored on must be long gone by now. The people who used it are still alive, of course, but human memory is too short to seriously rely on. So I'm thinking if a working version of Browsy is almost impossible to find, then can we try to avoid this problem by making sure the press doesn't find out about your company? And whatever they do to find out, we've got to make sure I can't hurt you. What do you want to do? Right. C. 
Search it on the old backups. Search it on the darknet. Rewrite the code from scratch. The old take two. Fake an old Browsy browser press release. Nah. Ask your subscribers if they use Browsy. Nah. Or can we just rewrite it from scratch? It's risky. Because rewriting something from scratch is fucking brutal. I don't think it's going to be on the darknet, is it? Because it's just a browser. Fuck, I don't know. I don't want to risk it. Scratch. Fuck. Come on, bro. Boss. Using me for this task is like using a microscope on a hammer. Fuck. I agree to do it, but please remember that this is the last time. You have a chunk of code in your email that looks roughly like the source code for a browser. I think it should be enough for the courts. Oh, so it worked. Oh, you found a working version of the program after all. To be honest, I begun to suspect that your company wasn't working on a browser at all, but something else. But now there shouldn't be any problems. All that remains is to take the initiative and go on the public with our version of events before the press learns about Browsy and the court proceedings when the company is liquidated. Or you can try and bury the whole story so that no journalists ever get to it. What would we do? This is your job, Alta. Come on, what can you do? She can only do this. Arrange a press briefing to explain the story. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, go on. And then at least we're, we're clean about it. I took the bull to by the horns. I told them our version of what the company was doing and handled all their tricky questions at the end. So Browsy LSC should now slip quietly into obscurity without any controversies, cowboy. Get in. I never expected you to come out with a story of, as a visionary hero of the future. Just think, you once had a disastrous dot-com company, which I consider the Medal of Honor. Back then, all the businessmen had them, and it's not your fault that the mock turned into a bubble. Anyway, we can breathe a sigh of relief. Browsy LLC will be dissolved without any problems. Let's write a tweet. My first business wasn't very successful. But things will be different. After that, I know how to handle a crisis. After that, I know how to handle any crisis. Good. And that's all that's really important to know. Now, I'm not a businessman, but the people's choice. I'm president for all of Americans. I've learned a lot since then. So stop looking for my mistakes. I will say one thing I have no regrets. My future projects will only be successful, I promise you. I have no regrets. I'm not making any promises. Boom, send it, baby. Send it! 19,000 likes. Support your local businesses with cash. Something's fishy down here. Best president. Fuck yeah, I am. I'm a beast. Yeah, baby, 76% approval rating. Oh. 9398113. We got 2 mil. We got 2 mil? How do we get 2 mil for that? Fucking hell, we are bored, lads. We can, we, lads, we can, um, we can pay the man. Mr. President, remember when we were talking about my schedule? Oh, I know, man. I know you're stressed. You're going on vacation. Just, just don't worry about it. Shimish Ridge, captain of the Delta Special Forces. Sir, the traditional ways of dealing with terrorists are getting less affected by the day. One Mexican drug lord called Modesto is bankrolling a proper army, and I take nothing short of a full-blown war to get him. Well, there might be one more option, namely putting a bounty on Mondeo's head and hoping there are still some tough hombres out there who would like to claim it. Shall the hunting season begin? Yes! Let's go hunting, lads. Mr. President, my exclusive golf club is on the brink of, a, of ruin. A few years ago, we decorated our course with the President's likeness. There was no shortage of clients. Who doesn't dream of putting a ball up? Commander in Chief's nose. But the enthusiasm has faded because nobody cares about Faced after he's gone and we have a new leader, you. I have a business proposal. We put your portrait out of the green and send royalties to your charity foundation. What do you say? Good deal. That's a deal. Okay. It's time to recover the assets you lost. So you can spend your richly deserved retirement in the lap of luxury. You have unlocked the first asset and gained access to the next. Complete the entire chain of missions to ensure a crushy retirement. 
Oh. That's what the dot com was. That's why we got paid. Recovered fortune, two million. New York Coyotes. The New York Coyotes claimed their first and only World Series title under the president's leadership. Oh, the Coyotes was a football team. That's what the guy that's working us, or burglar, is, is referring to. Former state pitcher Mason Kyatt inherited a majority stake in the club from the president, but the team hasn't been performing well over the past few seasons, and now runs the risk. Oh no, we were the boss of that, weren't we? And we must have hired the, the guy. That guy must have been a football player. Uh, hasn't been performed well over the past few seasons and now runs the risk of losing its triple A affiliation. Upload your shares in the club while they're still worth something. Let's reclaim it. First division. Okay. Okay. We've got a lot of money. Right. Improve the education. What did I need? Who did I need for this? I need someone reliable and trust with composing a bill. Do you have the right person on your team? That's education. Um, okay. It's either going to be Clint or Alter. But I don't know yet. First division. The former star pitcher holds stock that rightfully belongs to you. Refugees at risk. Refugee caravan has crossed the border. We've settled the people in a camp which is surrounded by a barbed wire fence and have assigned my best people as guards. But it's hard to keep 3,700 people under, under guard despite all of our efforts. Dozens of fugitives have slipped through. They're already spotted in border cities. As you know, racial tension is heating up across the country. For instance, take the Arizona town of Sandy Lake where some bastard brutally killed a schoolgirl. The police are still looking for a culprit but the locals have already decided that the killer is a refugee. The nearby gun shop suddenly sold out all pump action shotguns and they're obviously not for shooting beer bottles sir. I'm afraid the city is on the brink of a bloody massacre. Sandy Lake authorities can't handle the situation themselves and they're asking for help from the feds who aren't known for their subtle approach. In my experience, if you just hold back and let things go how they're going to go, you'll be dealing with another crisis. Plus, people will point the finger at you for getting everybody riled up. But I know you don't want to make a big spectacle of yourself and you don't need the extra attention on the press. Maybe you can figure out a way to calm everything down without making a big fuss. Calm down the residents. Protect the refugees. Okay. Alvaro. And Tien was really good at, at, at hostage negotiation before, wasn't he? Or was he? We didn't actually finish that quest before. What? Calm the lake. Calm them down. He He's good at that. He is a, diplo a diplomat. Right. Come on then. Warmonger, just the day before yesterday, in a ditch near the refugee camp, the body of Laurie Smith was found, a 15-year-old schoolgirl strangled to death for the quiet for the quiet town of Sandy Lake. This came a real shock. The victim is the daughter of local farmer Riley Smith. He's a wild binge drinker and doesn't want to wait for the results of the investigation. Instead, he's inciting his drinking buddies on a racist riot. The local sheriff is losing his grip. He can't produce the killer and can't claim calm his people down. How do you want to defuse the situation, Mr. President? Right. What can team do? Threaten Riley Smith with a lawsuit or offer him 25 grand? Threaten him with violence. Inspect the murder scene. Ask about the killer in the refugee camp. Let, tell you what. Let's inspect the murder scene and conduct our own investigation. Because this guy is good at shit like that. So I looked at the moat where Laurie Smith was found. Sandy Lake Sheriff ought to retire. I don't know how he could have missed the military badge with Riley Smith's initials. A stone's throw from where the victim was found. What? Military badge with Riley Smith's initials. A stone's throw away from where the victim was found. Plus I found fresh tyre marks near the ditch. I checked the tread pattern against Riley Smith's pickup and everything became clear. The bastard killed his own daughter, what the fuck? Well sir, should I go grab the bastard? 
Oh, shit. Threaten. Use evidence to blackmail Riley Smith into abandoning his plan. What, so we can't just have him... But why would we need to waste effort doing this? We can just hand it over to the police and have him fucking think it. Oh, because we need to tell him not to say things. Threaten with a lawsuit. 25 grand. Scare Riley Smith with murder charges and force him to abandon his plans to attack the refugee. I'm going to go with this because I don't want him to get burned out. Mr. President, this morning I staked out the local liquor store waiting for Riley to show. He was sober, but he was in a hurry to change that. I told him about the evidence we found and ordered him to leave the migrants alone. I said that if he touched a single one of them in Sandy Lake, we'd have him dead to rights. He didn't even try to make any excuses. He pushed me away and went for his liquor, but the plan worked. At Sunday service, Mr. Smith stood up in front of the whole congregation. He said that humility was the basis of a Christian faith. The farmer said he'd found God in his heart and renounced violence. He'd already forgiven the killers of his dear Laurie. Fucking hell. Someone in the crowd shouted coward. Another said Judah. Someone even said you're betraying the memory of your dead daughter. But Smith humbly endured all their insults. By noon, a small group of parishioners arrived at the refugee camp. Riley Smith wasn't among them, so it didn't amount to anything aside from a few racist shouts. All in all, a typical day at Sandy Lake. So it was an okay outcome, it's not the best. I would have had it, why, why didn't we have him done on the murder charges and prove it was him? Life at Sandy Lake is getting back to normal. Most of the refugees have left the city and for the most part the locals have stopped harassing those who remained. National journalists aren't going to be focusing on the town's problems. Frankly, when you ordered all the refugees detained in the camp, I was scared. I thought this decision would cost us dearly, but they've shown us that you can, res shown us that you can resolve any crisis. Now I respect you even more. Oh, and I almost forgot, you brought a murderer to justice. I knew Riley Smith was a racist and a bastard, but I never imagined he could have done such a thing, so he did get brought to justice good. Write a tweet, come on then, what's this shit? Almost all of us are descendants of migrants. The recent events at Sandy Lake showed that we must not forget this. Let Sandy Lake be a lesson to us all. Almost all of the descendants are, are of migrants. Let Sandy Lake be a lesson to us all. Nah. Yeah, this is good. Racism is a terrible disease of our society. The recent events of Sandy Lake showed that we must not forget this. I will not tolerate the treatment of migrants that we had under faced. I will not tolerate the treatment of migrants. We must all... B our great goal is safety and equal rights for everyone in America. Based on the terrible disease of our society, the recent events at Sandy Lake showed that we must not forget this. Bang. That's a good tweet. Thanks Mr President, we all feel at home in America, that's why I voted for this guy. Yeah, doubt it. Didn't get as many likes as I hope, but it's still kind of good, kind of good bit. Yeah baby, nearly an 80% approval rating. Right, these guys are pretty stressed out. I don't want to push them over the edge. I hope we don't need them for anything else. Vanilla Golf Club Director. Mr. President, your face on the golf course is a real work of landscape and art. I especially like the crook in the nose. Regardless of its factual likeness, the idiot buffoons from the shock news actually try to make fun of us both, but the people are having none of it. We are selling even more tickets than back when face was in office. 1.5 million! Lads, we've got so much fucking money now. Pamela Najina, Councillor for Indigenous Affairs. Mr. President, the tallest mountain in North America used to be named Mount McKinley, but all the newer maps call it Denali. Would you like to know why? It's the name given to it by Anthabascans, the native people of this land. Now the representatives of Nav Navajo and other large tribes are sending persistent requests to rename the Pot Potomac River to the Kohongoraton, quite a tongue twister, this name, but that's what it was called by the Native Americans who lived here. I'm afraid turning them down is going to sour the relations with the National Council. Should we agree to rename Washington's main waterway? What's it called? If I'm honest lads, right? 
I think having people rename things is just fucking stupid, isn't it? Like, honestly. Oh, it, it used to be called this, mate. So what? It's not called it anymore. And this is just pandering to fucking people, right? But you know what it is. And then if you go down, if you go, if you do this, you're going to go down the, the a slippery slope. Because there's going to be some guy that's descended from the fucking only guy that was sat there in America. And they're going to go, yeah, by the way, my fucking tribesman that used to speak fucking... Right, I want to rename it that. And they're like, well, nobody speaks it anymore. Nobody can fucking pronounce that. Nobody was alive back then. Nobody gives a fuck, mate. It's going to sour relations with the nation's council. Nation council. Fucking just do it. Just, just pan that to them. Sometimes you've got to do it. And if they're, if they're living there, right, and it, I suppose it's good for tourism as well because, like, oh, yes, it's about the national heritage. But I think when you get into renaming things, it just goes on a slippery slope, but I'm going to do it this once. Director of the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs. Sir, our ambassador to Japan is going to make their first speech in the Hiroshima Memorial Peace Park today. A fitting moment to deliver a formal apology to the Japanese people. What? Yes, some do believe we should not admit the wrongfuls of our actions, but maybe an apology for dropping the atomic bomb will let us close the chapter for good. Bro, man, it's in the past. Lads, what's an apology going to do? Go on, then. Philip King, CEO at Smart Home. Sir, I took a look around and wow, this place is positively medieval. You have to turn knobs to open doors, pull cords to bring down curtains and push buttons to, for the title to flush. You are not, you are living in a museum, you know. It just so happens that my dream is to make a smart white house. I won't bother you with the details, but my project includes reactive lighting that adjusts to the tone of your voice. Nah, mate. This, all this fucking fancy shit just costs money and it fucking breaks down all the time, mate. I just like manual. Manual doors so they don't break. No. Reactive lighting that I just... Nah, I don't want that shit. Trouble in Billamain. Hey man, I'm sorry to interrupt your work, but we've got an emergency in Minnesota. A gas cylinder exploded in a supermarket in Billamain. The roof collapsed on 130 people, 15 dead, 20 injured. A9 units are looking for people still stuck under the rubble. I was watching the live stream from the scene. and it's, it's some nightmare. Ambulance sirens are going to go non-stop and people are in shock. Here's what I was thinking. Maybe we could show our support for the people of Billamain during this difficult time. We'll fly to the scene of the explosion and meet with the victims personally. What's that going to do? Absolutely nothing. We'll announce a day of mourning. Nothing. Let's not get involved. We won't be making any easier for the people who are suffering. I'm going to fly there to show my support. I was hoping we could send actual help. But let's show, show support to the victims personally. We need a personal face. This is going to bite me in the arse, but never mind. Man, that was a generous gesture and it showed how much you care for your everyday fellow man. You feel their pain with all your heart and soul, but unfortunately that's not how the people of Bill's main sword. I knew that. Local media are saying that you were just there using the tragedy for a photo op. Twitter is a wave of negative comments because the city's main street got shut down because of you. They're saying you blocked them from moving special equipment that led to greater casualties. I'm sure it's just blatantly not fair. Where's the gratitude of respect? If only they knew how much sweat and blood we shed for the common people. Yeah, we, this was a lose-lose situation. It was always going to happen. 4.2%. Ah, that's the best we can do. Fuck you. Director of the Bureau of Western. Sir Ambassador delivered a speech in Hiroshima and apologised on behalf of the American people. Like you told, the Japanese met this statement with a polite yet awkward applause. But things look much brighter on the home front. The conflict happened long enough for our people to take apologies and display of strength. Whatever. Hostages at the supermarket. What's going on here? Lads, can we just have a fucking a, a month when nothing happens? Man, check this out. Some bum in New York went into a supermarket and took a bunch of weekend shoppers hostage. He's got an automatic rifle and yelling that he's not talking to the president in 10 minutes he'll start shooting. You're not actually going to talk to the psychopath, are you, man? I wouldn't, but American lives are on the line. Maybe you can cool him down, no. I'll try to figure out what he wants and try not to provoke him. You can't just do that. We don't negotiate with terrorists, storm the supermarket at once. Because that means anybody can just go on there and talk to the president. We don't negotiate with terrorists. That's not how we fucking play this shit. 
Oh, do you have some whiskey left? I need a drink. The local chief gave the order to storm the place and the place turned into a damn meat grinder. Two civilians died and one special forces guy died too. The psycho got lucky. He's in intensive care right now. Good thing the media didn't pick up on the story that you used to participate in the negotiations. I'm sure you did the right thing. We need to watch out for all America here and not spend all our attention on a few idiots, I agree. I'll have that, ki I'll have that guy assassinated at the hospital. You can't have people like that walking about society. The mad alcoholic dick who threatened the visitors of a New York store asked to negotiate with Mr. President himself. Thankfully, the man in charge of this country was smart enough to ignore the call. Okay, so now we're back in here. Right, Everything's looking good, right? We just need to maintain it. I've got so much money that we can spend it on, on anything we want. Right. Improve education. I could send Clint there. Do you know what else I'm thinking, actually? I don't think we need the 250,000 anymore. But what I would like is, did we have this guy before? Yeah, I start to lose one stress point at the end of every month for every team member. But wait there. Team member's actions increase the stress points. But I like that 4.5% rating, it's a good buff. I'm thinking I might lose this 250,000, which means I also technically lose 180,000 every month. Nah, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. I think this is the best setup, honestly. It actually is. Right. First division. Oh, that's the thing for me. Surprise at Camp David. Oh, I remember this. Right. Tell you what, why don't we put Clint on the education front? Negotiate. No, it's demanding money. Tell you what, let's get this done. 10 million. Take it. It's done, right? Thank you. As we discussed, I'll give you access to the most influential senators in the United States. Ms. Dickinson of Alaska, she will help you not only with the immediate problems of impeachment, but also with advancing the amendment. I must emphasize I can only arrange a meeting with the senator. Your dealings with her are your own. I hope this lovely check didn't empty all your accounts, otherwise you'll need to find other ways of persuading the senator to see things your way. <laughs> senator Dickinson. Well, that's important. Senator Dickinson, I've only got two turns to do this, right? I want to get this done. Honey, to negotiate with Dickinson, you better have something on her. To make her be more accommodating. If you have nothing on her, then you must have something in your wallet. With no information and no money, all you can count on is flattery. They say Dickinson fall for that. What did they say? Ready or not? I'm not ready yet. Don't rush it. Get things ready. Right. Do we have anything on Dickinson? Latent racism of people caught on it, intelligence reports. FBI informants, forensic. A list of the names and positions of the people involved in the White House wiretaps. Warren Monger, the director of national intelligence, infiltrated the wiretap. Right. Right, this is going to be hard because none of this actually mentioned names. Dirt on White House employees. Right. I've still got three million at the end of the day. I think we've got enough money to cover that if we go into this. Into this, uh, I don't need to bring people with me for that, so that's good. I want to get rid of these first before we go to that. Right. Name the weapon. I was thinking... Ollie could name the weapon. 
improve the education. Prize at Camp David. This is the one for my wife, isn't it? Bring Ellie to the camp. I could use. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do, lads? I'm going to spend some money. I'm going to spend some money, right? Watch this. It knocks three off. I'm going to put him and him in. I'm going to spend 400,000 to get these down. Right, I've done it. And they're immediately available for me now. Because I, I, I want to I wanna send these. Because this was the one I was going to do at the end of the last episode. Bring Elliot in the camp. So we definitely have to use Alta. Because Alta is Ellie's friend. And Tien is like a chaperone, a diplomat. Tien, go on, you're going. Right, let's, let's, let's get this out of the way. Buddy, I'm sure you know how to take care of your wife and you don't need my advice. I'm just worried about the Secret Service. Don't forget that Ellie has a detail just like us. And you know the boys in black don't like surprises. Better coordinate with them somehow. What do you think we should do? Invite Ellie to the residence for an interview with reporters in honour of the Camp David Accords. Invite Ellie to Camp David for a surprise meeting with the First Lady of Canada. Invite Ellie to meet with the Ambassador of China. Invite Ellie to meet some diplomats from Belarus. I'm thinking that this might... This might work. I'm thinking the First Lady of Canada is going to go down well. Plus, it comes from Alta. Cowboy, it didn't take much for Sweden. Ellie has been looking forward to meeting her counterpart from Canada. She dropped everything and said she'd be delighted to go. The guests are soon to arrive. Have a lovely evening. Stop by a little later. You and I did a great job organising everything, buddy. The anniversary went perfectly. We talked, we drank, we shot guns at the plates. It was a night I'll always remember. But listen, what about Ellie? She didn't look like she was having a good time. We made everything all special, but she just sat there all night with a sour look on her face. Why don't you go talk to her? She probably wanted to meet the first lady, didn't she? <laughs> she probably okay. Honey, when are we going back home to Washington? You don't seem to be enjoying the party. No, no, of course I am. Thank you. Everything was very nice. You and Tony are great, but I told you I don't like Camp David. Would you care to explain why? Okay, fine, I'll tell you. I read in the journal Geopolit that this used to be an ancient Indian cemetery. They're a respected parascientific publication, so don't just dismiss it. Alvaro told me his grandmother's house was on a similar site, and do you know what happens to her? One day she just disappeared, evaporated. Do you understand what I'm saying? The chakra analysts think that there's a terrible energy here, that there's evil everywhere. They can smell it in their bones. I can smell it now too. What the, f what the fuck are you talking about? This She's tapped, man. Why are we still with her? You probably think it's all a bunch of nonsense, but that doesn't make it any easier for me. I'm going to go home, okay? I don't think you can do anything to help. I know what to do. What? Rebury the Native Americans? Oh. This guy's probably good at that. Eliminate the ghosts the Vietnam Vietnamese way. I'm doing lads. Oh my god. Eliminate the ghosts the Vietnamese way. Shit, is this gonna work? It's a shame you can't find use for my diplomatic talents and instead make me do anti scientific nonsense, but very well do what I can. As a Buddhist, I believe in reincarnation and that we are God guided by the souls of our ancestors. I put up a couple of Buddhist statues around the Camp David, lit candles and assured your wife that the souls of the people buried here are now as peaceful as possible. That seems to have satisfied the first lady and how she feels safe. Mate, I'm a voodoo fucking monster, mate. I'm what a legend. I'll take Tien's word for it. He says the dark spirits are gone and my own spirit feels much calmer now. See, how load a load of shit. Tien just made up this mumbo jumbo and she's like, oh yes, I can feel it already in my bones. I know I must look like a complete fool and I'm sure it's all just self-delusion, but that doesn't make it seem any less real. Thank you for understanding me. Okay. I don't know how that benefits me in any way other than to keep her happy, but... 
All we managed to do with all that is stress these guys out. Pathetic. Cost me 400 grand for that, I hope she knows. Name them. Improve the education. First division. Right, wait there, what do we need for this? We need to send two people away for, for, for a month. My dear president, do you remember your old friend, the baseball player, Mason K? You said you gave him a stake in the New York Coyotes when you made your first prison deal. I don't know if you've been following him, but Mason didn't just keep a share, but it ended up the team manager. At first, he seemed like a real talent, and the players went on to the big leagues, but things aren't going to go smoothly for him now. The players are openly revolting against the manager, trying to rein them in. He added some real useless players to the roster, the kind who would wash out of college league. This weekend, the Coyotes are facing off against the Indian Wolves, who won the World Series last year. The team still has some good players, but the contracts are expiring. And if the team doesn't use the game to prove that it still belongs to the Major League, those contracts won't be renewed. In my opinion, Mason is running our assets into the ground. You built that team from scratch, gave him an expensive gift, and now he behaves like this. It's time to take back control of the Coyotes, or all your years' work will go to waste. But before you take the Coyotes back, we need to make sure they win the upcoming game. If they lose, the remaining players will leave the club all at once, and the value of the team's shares will collapse, and the team will be no more used to us. Who do you think can breathe some team spirit back into the Coyotes and teach Mason a lesson? Conrad. Make money by selling your former stake. I think Conrad. Conrad used to be for the Coyotes. Alvaro. Tell you what I'm going to do. He's got a persuasion. That's not really going to get them pumped up, is it? How could Ollie do anything? I'm tempted to put tea in on it. We'll do this. The main problem is our pitcher, Aki Yoshida. He was a good player 10 years ago, but now he's no longer in shape. Another big problem is the Wolves batter, Timon Blancho. I read the sports press that the whole team is built around this guy. There's a lot of rumours about him. Apparently, whenever he solicits women he likes, his lawyers pay them substantial compensation to keep the experience out of papers. At the same time, Timon is a professional. He never misses a workout because he's been out binging with his friends. What should we do to improve the Coyotes' chances, right? We need to strong on them, because this guy used to be in the Coyotes. Pump Yoshida with stimulants before the game. That is a surefire way to win. <laughs> lads. Lads, we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna pump this guy pull a fucking win 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 juice. Brother, sometimes stimulants ain't good for the soft guys. Right before the match, I met up with Aki Yoshida and explained what to do. Unfortunately, the kid overdid it and sniffed away. Oh. He fell out in the middle of the field, convoluted, and got carried away with the doctors. Fuck that. Lads. Not happy. No, that's not happening. Fucking saves come on this. Lads, do you know what I actually thought was going to happen? <laughs> actually thought. I actually thought he was going to go in and go, here man, I used to work, I used to play in the fucking Coyotes, man, sort it out. Okay, so we know that's not the tactic, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going down that route. Man, that was bullshit. This is fucking bullshit, this. Sometimes the game is fucking bullshit. Right, okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting this done, right. Don't send Conrad, he's fucking useless. I'm going to go with Alter and Clint. Right, how then? Charge Timon with sexual harassment. Publish a feature article about coyotes in the sports press to read the team's morale. Send Timon Blanco a phony tax summons for concealing income. Wait there. The main problem is our pitcher, Aki Yoshida.
And we're there, so one of them, our picture is Aki. Ah! Lads, I understand it now. I didn't read it properly. If I'd have read it properly, I know, lads, watch what we're going to do. Because I, I thought it was a bit weird that it said for my guy to break someone's kneecaps. That's exactly what we're going to do. If I'd have read it properly, I thought both of these people worked for me. Worked for my team. Right, watch this, lads. This is going to go down a fucking treat. Watch this. Watch this. Someone's getting their kneecaps broke. It's going to be... It's going to be... Amazing. Let's go with our original choice. Bang. Watch this. This guy, Timon Blanco. See, this is why it went wrong. This paragraph should have ended there. He's no longer in shape. Another big problem, new paragraph, is that the Wolves batter Timon Blanco. I read in the sports press the whole team is built around him. Right, this guy's gone down to Chinatown. Watch. Shoot Blanco in the knees. <laughs> Brother, I do love the way you solve problems. The boys and I waited out for Blank on his parking lot and I fired a couple of bullets into his knees. You should have heard how he screamed. Don't look like he'd be playing. We also took his money and his watch so that the police can think we're ordinary robbers. Very clever. Is this going to play out? Good news, my dear. The Coyotes game was a win. A good win. Sports writers say they've never seen such a well-coordinated game in the Coyotes show today. Obviously, you mean a lot to the team. <laughs> I don't know how much about games, but I can count money. And yes, the asset has suddenly become significantly more valuable. I would bet that Mason has received a few offers from those wishing to buy his share. Now that value is starting to climb, I think they'll soon dump the team and has promised to make a quick profit. We mustn't let this happen. Right. Shit, Tien, I hadn't planned for this to happen. Have a heart to heart with Mason and suggest he return the team. Now the problem is, I hope by having a heart to heart with him means it's strong arming him. Otherwise he's going to have to get killed. I don't want to kill him, but... Brother, I sat down with Mason at the barn treating the whiskey. To be honest, the convention never really got going. I'm not good at that stuff anymore. Never need to talk about my grandfather was into baseball, but I'm not into anything. It's a whole story. Obviously we never started talking about transferring the team. Fuck man, this game. This fucking game, lads. I wish, do you, know what, do you know what I wish I had from this game, right, mate? I've got this guy. This guy's my strong arm, right? Why is the option there not to just fucking say, here, yeah, mate, if you don't give all the... If you don't hand over the team, I'm going to kill you. You know what I mean? He's getting killed. I want to kill everyone. Watch this. Everyone's getting destroyed. Bro. You're getting... You're getting assassinated. Everyone's getting killed. Watch this. Fuck I'm putting Clint on the job. See if we can do it differently. I want this asset. I want the asset. Bang. Right, what can this guy do? Can this guy do it a different way? I suppose he's good at persuasion. 10% of the sale price of the shares. Scour the contracts and find some way to recover the shares through the courts. Nah, he's dead. <sighs> See ya. Mason's dead, bruh. I'm honoured to pull someone else's plug for you, especially that old fart. I met him right at the door to his house. He was coming back from a walk with his dog. One bullet sent our man to the Lord. Another sent, another one sent his bitch. They killed the dog. The only thing is, I don't quite get what's going on. I read in the internet just to share... That his share just went to his daughter and she already put the team up for sale, so I don't want to oh. Well, lads, I told you, right? We're going to get this fucking... T of getting this team, whether our fucking saves come for the next hour or not. I fucking want this team. I want the team. Cook the man some fucking eggs. You go in there. We need a lawyer. We just need to do it legitimately. I wish you didn't have to. I wish you could just do it properly. Kill everyone. Killing everyone solves the problems, man. Right. Conrad. Bang. Shoot that bitch. 
right now. Bang. Lawyer him up. 10% of the shares. That's all he's getting. I fail to explain to Mason why 10% is better than 100% he currently has. Right, let's see if we can get how, 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 how are you supposed to do this? You no, know what the problem with this is? There's like one specific thing you have to do and, and there's no way out of it. Why? Well, I don't understand why we couldn't just went to him. Just went here, mate. I'm gonna kill you if you don't fucking give us the shares. Right. We, we, we need. We need to do this a different way. Conrad's definitely the, the best option for the first one, right? What else? Could, teen. Ollie. Ollie. Do you think Ollie could do something? Hacking or something? I'm gonna have to try it. It's the only way. Right, come on lads. Come on Ollie man, you need to secure the deal. Recover the stocks using fishing and hacking. Do it. I tried everything. But he's too well protected. Lads, I don't know the, I don't know the answer to this. What's the answer? I'm leaving it, I'm not gonna do it, I can't be fucking asked. Maybe it is just he needs to just, uh, well, How do you solve this? Maybe it is. Maybe the answer is this guy. Ah. Oh, fucking give me my shit, man. This old fuck, I hate him. I'm gonna kill him anyway. Even if I get the shares, I'm gonna go around his house and shoot him in the face. As if he's gonna do that. I hinted that a hasty sale of his shares might lead him in trouble. I promised you I was very convincing, but Mason doesn't intimidate easily. He just smiled, put down his cup, and left like nothing happened. He wasn't interested with anything I had to say. Lads, this is impossible. It's it now is it's fucking ridiculous to have a quest like this in a game where there's like one specific thing that you, mate you've got to have multiple ways to solve it. You can't just fucking get to that point and do that. Maybe it is the court case. It's impossible, it's actually impossible. Scour the contracts and find some way to recover the shares through the courts. Only way, it's the only way. I have studied the documents and I am pleased to say that an agreement may need to be cancelled. In fact, there's no evidence that there ever was an agreement. You and Mason have entered into a sale and purchase agreement 51% stake for $1, but there are no documents to confirm this dollar was ever handed over to you. In order to avoid a drawn out ordeal, Mason agreed to settle out of court. He will transfer the money from the sale of his shares to our accounts. Fucking hell, lads, how hard was that? Congratulations, the mission shares were liquidated and we made good money off it. Write a tweet. Come on then. Oh, fuck for that. I'm rooting for the coyotes tonight.
Let's go, son. We're gonna win. Okay, it was rule fast as the bolt. The wolves are coming, you're gonna get owned better than anyone else with the badges. Honey, next time you decide to lend somebody something, ask a lawyer to get a receipt, okay? <laughs> I know. Seventy-five percent now. Look at the money we gained. Now we're at seventy-five percent approval rating, right? We can hire that person if we want. Head of Secretary, sorry, the Security Service, Mr. President. We must ban the development of oil wells off the coast of Antarctica. The risk of oil spills in the region is too great, and removing their consequences will be will be next to be impossible due to the harsh climate. Antarctica is home of the unique flora and fauna. Just take one look at these adorable fur seals. They are doomed unless you act. Mr. President, will you sign an executive order banning oil production in the Antarctic shelf? No. That's going to that's gonna cause a negative impact. It's probably going to drop me below the 75. I need to hire her quick. Mr. President, the pen pushers from the White House office have submitted an anonymous letter. They are complaining that the tasks are so confidential they cannot even discuss daily affairs with the colleagues in the smoking room. Pressure has forced them to consume antidepressants. It many have taken to the bottle, but I have a solution. Let people smoke without leaving their workplaces. They'll stop gossiping and this fuck off, man. You fucking stupid, man. Smoke in the workplace. I can't think of anything more disgusting. Oh, I will sit in well, what, what? No, is you, you, you enable smoking at your desk. What's the next step? Shitting at your desk. Oh, what's the point in going, going to the toilet, man? We'll just take a shit and be niggas. No, right. Lads. Okay. We can tackle Senator Dickinson now. I think this is going to be hard. I'm pretty sure I've got stuff on her, right? Got a lot of money as well. I need to, whatever happens. Well, as long as we don't end them, I need to put these two on rehab, as well as Clint. Alvaro, improve the education. I'm thinking Clint or Alta, but since we've got another episode to do this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. Name the weapon. Ah, I think we need to take care of Senator Dickinson right now. Actually, you know what it is, fuck it, lads. End of an episode. Let's do this first thing next episode and have the meeting with Senator, Senator Dickinson. See you there, lads.